welcome back to my channel. This is a special one for me because I am with my, I would say my mentor in the industry actually, Ooh. lucky me. Um, this is of course Sylvie and Alex Shantikai. We are going to have a very nice, relaxed, chilled chat because it has been, if you can believe it, 20 years. 20 years. Well, I don't know why I'm telling you. 20 years. Can I talk? Please. <laughs> it's been the fastest 20 years ever. Ever. I, can, I, just, incredible. I don't even know where. I think I came on board in like after three years and Maybe. that seems yeah. like whoom, a lifetime ago. Well, it's two yeah. kids ago for me, yeah. a grandchild ago for you. Yes. It's and insane. Two kids working with me that didn't work with me. Now you've got the whole family. Yes, I do. So, okay, I, we don't want to go over it the story because obviously you have been around for 20 years but maybe just a very brief because when I talk about you I talk about you in terms of well I learned from the woman that learned from Este so whatever. <laughs> <Actually>. <laughs> and I think we all use that to a degree don't we Alex I think we're all a little bit like hmm yeah for it. sure I think it's always exciting to see the heritage and the lineage it's strong women having made amazing products and having the humanity and the femininity in it as well that's yeah. what i've always heard from you the really fun stories of este of it still was fun yeah going to counters fun. and saying where's my glow and trying to make yeah. sure you had the product that kind of made you look alive and we we're just always even just now doing her makeup wanting a glow i think it's, it's all about the glow yeah. and she was a real grandmother you know yeah. she wanted everything she wanted you know, cakes everywhere and then she said well you know the sales girl in the uh, they have nothing so let me get an orchestra and let's have a party <laughs> she had a band. let's get an orchestra that woman had a band she didn't have a driver she didn't have really a great house until quite late but she had a band and she hey. would take all the girls at sax and Whatever take them last event yeah for a dance so full of life so you are in terms of the grand doyen of working in the industry for how long, we won't go into long, long term numbers, but mm -hmm. talk to us very briefly about your previous, because when I mention to people the word prescriptives, without fail, if they're over a certain age, especially, maybe a 20 year old, no. Mm -hmm. But if I say prescript prescriptives, you get, oh my God, I love that brand. Okay, so when I first came to New York, because obviously I was not born in New York, you can hear this. Um, when I came from Paris to New York, I was going to do something maybe in the art business because I was grown into that. My parents were art collectors and I grew up with that. Okay. I had a girlfriend called Jan von Furstenberg. And Jan said, come and work with me in the dress. I said, Jan, I'm sorry, I don't like your dresses. <laughs> so, wait, you said, sorry, Jan, I don't like your dresses, to DVF. Yeah. Yeah, well, just, <laughs> I like that. I mean, we're talking on the phone, I'm in my bathtub, she's in her bathtub. And she said, what do you, I said, you know what, what if we need a cosmetic company? <gasps> she said, genius, let's do it. So, next day I look in the yellow pages, I have no idea how to do it, right? So I look at the, I just arrived in New York, so I look at the yellow pages and I figure out where to find a lab which I've never done in my life. And somehow I found a lab, I found packaging, I found everything. And then maybe a year later, we had a great company. So we opened this company, we ran it for four years. I remember traveling around the United States, I think we did 27 cities in 28 days, yeah. something like that. And oh, we're young, you know, yeah. we're 25, 26. So we were young. And um, I then, stopped uh, oh yeah we sold the business and then the, we had the store on Madison I remember moving into my house practically across the street the same day we opened the store can you imagine moving to your house with a baby another <laughs> one on the way and everything crazy <laughs> and um, we uh, sold the business with a lot of had heard about me and they asked me for a meeting well I like cosmetic, right? Mm -hmm. You like cosmetic. So that was like the candy store, you know, you, all the, you have all these things, you know, it's amazing. So you get these people who do things for you, you have all these people everywhere, and I thought, wow, that's interesting. And they asked me to create a company for them. As you do. You know. As you do. <laughs> Lord <laughs> call and say, hi Sylvie, can you make a company for yeah, me, please? exactly. So they were really interesting, I thought, you know. Okay, they really want something new and different. Okay, I will. So I did something different. I did prescriptives. Yeah. And prescriptives was about understanding that at that time, all the women in cosmetic had long thick nails up to here, they had hair up to half, <laughs> lashes up to here. Showing pads. Yeah, yeah. And they were not able to talk to anyone. My generation, which were the women that burned their bra, didn't wear makeup, you know, all this generation was not going to get it from them. So I want to do something for the women that had just stopped going to college and needed a job. 
and I thought they need to look good, natural, they look to look professional, but they look to look really like themselves. Yeah. So I did the company that understood people's skin. Now, I was born with a very keen eye for color. So I can look at a person mm -hmm. and say, you're that color. You know, I can really see these are the colors that work with you, the other colors don't work with you, don't even try. Oh, I've so had that conversation many times. <laughs> yeah. Darling, <laughs> this is wrong. About it. Darling, this is wrong. <laughs> but then you know what's right. Yeah, that helps too. No, it's all good. <laughs> Darling, this is wrong. <laughs> so anyway, we did all this. And prescriptive was about making people understand what worked for them, what didn't work for them. It's everyone's first makeup line because it resonated with people and that's like when they hear that we, you did that they're like there's a something there's a logic that makes sense when they come well, to Chantecai it's like, also it just it's and some people I just find some people would be on Chantecai and say I used to use this brand called Prescriptive and I'd be like oh, funny you should say yeah. that <laughs> and it's, it's a shame naturally like even employees naturally have like come to you and we have a lot of Prescriptive people it's a lot of that lots, same lots, lots. logic and get right to the chase well also consistent smart. right so yeah. you skip forward Yes. What made you think I'm going to do this for myself? Um, three kids mm. in school or college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what usually does it? You want to do it for yourself. No, but the truth is, um, it was time for me to get the hell out. Yeah, get the hell out of Dodge. And also, I think that um, I thought originally I could do just a little nice company with fragrance. Not you tried that, but it did not last three seconds, did it? No, because you don't make any money. <laughs> Same story, three kids in school. <laughs> you don't make any money with fragrance. Unle and the big company with fragrance spent a fortune to let send them out, and then sometimes you just go poof the yeah, next year. So you see all those fragrance. So it's not necessarily a money making enterprise. Yeah. Uh, especially if you have high quality, high thing. You don't have to have people sell it everywhere. I just didn't have the money. No. So. But you kept it. I mean, it's at the oh, heart. Oh, yeah, it's so a fantastic fragrance. 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 It's, I mean, you made no some question. beautiful ones with lauder too. Yeah. You made calyx, everyone's first name. See, I, I just Great forget when people say calyx. I always, I always forget about it until someone says calyx. I go, that's a Sylvie. Yeah. So it's an incredible yours. heritage. So you, you've done, so you do fragrance. What makes you then think maybe we should do color? No, what happened was, I started selling free uh, Newman Marcus. Uh, Harrods, mm -hmm. Space and K, mm -hmm. Nikki at the time, and in Hong Kong, and everybody, um, I realized that there's no way I'm going to make money with fra with fragrance. So on my way back to Dallas, coming back from Hong Kong, they said to me, "You know, Sylvie, why aren't you doing a makeup line? That's what we need from you. Mm -hmm. What are you waiting for?" Mm -hmm. And I say, "Well, about a million dollar." Yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> so they said. They were in the hallway, they came back and they said, hmm, you know what, we'll pay you your first order in advance. Well, now, when do you hear that from you retailer? You don't hear that. Never, ever, ever, ever. So, I love them to death. I stayed with them exclusively for 10 years just because of that. It was yeah. a handshake, but I thought, you know, who does that? Yeah. So, we started with the makeup line and they gave me 40 doors and if you want to hold on to your socks, every prescriptive counter. They say that's some... Um, Oh, no. Yeah, every prescriptive counter, 40 doors, boom. That says boom. a lot. Well, that says a lot about you and about your standing in the business, especially if you know the business inside out like we all do. That just doesn't happen. No. And especially to take space off who prescriptive was owned by. That would be Lauder. Um, so, okay, and then you bring in, so the family so, affair is starting from so there. So there are three of us working, yeah. like 40 counters, right? <laughs> and there's Just a, a little bit of a stretch. And a lot, a lot of people to train, hire, get going, get everything done, get, beside the products, beside the tester units, beside everything else, you got to get these people knowing what they say. Yeah. So I hired two people and we traveled. I think one year I had 75 you know, PAs, right? PAs, like in store events, you know, yeah. in store events in the year. You know, there's been yeah. break every weekend, you know. Especially when the kids are still young and you're yeah. just trying to churn it out. Yeah. And then, and you had Olivia with you though. So Olivia and Medina was wonderful. My sister. We, yeah. We did, you know, all of the product together. We did all the makeup together. It was great. I remember Nikki Kennard coming to the house and saying, she had literally a piece of paper with a bunch of lipstick color on it and said, Wow, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> That's very Nikki. Yeah. This is good. This is good. This yeah, there's no grey areas with Nikki Kinnaird. No. No. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So you do makeup. So we did makeup. And, and then, then we had makeup hair. for two years. And then the customer would say, We want her skincare. Mm -hmm. That never happens either. No. Because usually, and my buyers say, Don't do skincare. 
Bobby can't sell skincare. Trish can't sell Laura skincare. Can't skincare. No, Laura can't, can't sell skincare. skincare. No, these people can't sell skincare. Your own makeup line, you can sell skincare. And I thought, hmm, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Which usually, to anyone who knows you, means I'm going to do it and you need to get out of my way. <laughs> it worked so well because the product was so good. It's a bit so of an understatement though. <laughs> so Alex, when do you come onto the scene? So for the uninitiated... I came in in 03, 04. So about 14 years ago. But already you had launched a skincare in 01. Yeah. I think it was yeah. 97, 98 fragrance, 99 makeup. And you had looked, were you looking for a jasmine field down in the south of France with Olivia bumping around in your little, in your little car, car? As you do. Exactly. And then you tumbled across this, this time of year, in May. Exactly. A the huge rose like, football of field May. of roses. The but you see, this is the kind of story that some agency would just make up. No. But with you guys, no, it's we all know true. it's literally yeah. what happened. Like, go this way, no, go this way. Wow, what is that? Ooh, okay. I mean, Let's I've, I've seen you and Olivia even trying to cross the road together, and that's entertaining. <laughs> I remember Olivia almost grabbing you by the hair and screaming, <laughs> Maman, because you were looking the wrong way. Yes, and I was, I was like, like, oh God, everyone's going to die. I can't take the stress. That happened we're in the wrong side of town. It's morning already. <laughs> <laughs> so you come on board, and then. So skincare. We had skincare, and then we had. Uh, we started by the idea. My idea was. You put the best stuff in the skincare. You put plants, you put incredibly effective plants, and you look for something that's really scientifically intelligent. And you put more money in it than anybody else because they all take out the costs on totally. the product. Totally. Because it has to go to advertising, it has to go to other things as we know. So I thought if I create something that's incredibly, incredibly good, it'll work. Yeah. You know, I didn't have any money to advertise. I didn't have any money to do anything, really. Nothing. So I just had just barely enough to buy the product, you know, and we sell it. So that's it. So we just did that. We took the best product. We did the most. And the woman with who I started to do the formula is the woman, the extraordinary Dr. Ressa Valle, who had done La Prairie. Mm -hmm. And she always said, when Sylvie, when Nihans, you know, did La Prairie, came to me, he brought me a bunch of bloody cells. He said, when Sylvie came, she brought me flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Much nicer way to do business. Flowers. So, Rose so, de May. Rose de May. Rose de May is, I always call it, the skeleton of the range. Yes. Because it's good. kind of very where good. everything else, well, I was on the counter for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> because it's where everything else comes from. Sure. So, for, the, for those of you that don't know, Rose de May is your amazing well, so rose water spray, so much more than that, but it's also your main ingredient in the skincare. Well, as you know, every formula, every emulsion has to have 50% water. Yeah. Sometimes or more, sometimes not, but about that. So we decide, or I decide from the beginning, instead of having water from the top, we're going to use rose water. So that base already is alive and full of vitamins and full of good stuff mm -hmm. for you. And it smells amazing, so I don't need fragrance because I didn't want to use anything artificial. So yeah. No fragrance, nothing in it, just the way the stuff is made. Do you think the skincare, do you still have conversations to this day, Alex, where the skincare is overlooked by people thinking it's, oh, it's a nice skincare brand, but they don't get what the skincare actually is? Or do you think the message is out there now? Is your, In terms of sales, are you sort of skincare and makeup together? Or are you 50-50 and sometimes and skincare is 60% of the sales. I yeah. think you get both. What I like about it is you do get someone interested in the foundation or the mascara or mm. the lipsticks or the really pretty palettes with animals and they come into the brand that way and then you we do a makeover, so then they try the skincare and it starts to reduce the redness, it smells so good, they see the effect, so then they, they grow with us. Or they come from skincare and then they try on color after. So it's such an mm. amazing opportunity. She's into the lifestyle of the whole thing. Yeah. What I think they don't know is how natural it is. So yeah. there's no fragrance, but there's also no colorant, there's no sulfate detergents, there's no petrochemicals, there's no added um, animal ingredients whatsoever, certainly no animal testing. It's very pure, and if anything, it's between 75 to 100% natural. And no one, I think, knows that about us because we were one of the original first naturals. I, and I think that's key. From the beginning, you're that like, it's really clean. I want key. it to not be... Yeah, because I think there are brands now that shout about it like yeah. it's a big deal, and I'm the and worst person deal. to try and talk to about it because I go, we were doing that 20 years ago. I yeah. still say we. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we. we. <laughs> oh, and it does help that the Chantal I CH. Every time you did a GWP <laughs> bag, I would go, thanks for the initials, girls. <laughs> Perfect. So you've done skincare. Mm -hmm. Everything's flying, and I think it was word well, of mouth too. That was so impressive. much word of mouth. Okay, okay, so here's my little quick story. Mm. When Biodynamic launched, mm. I remember being in a hotel room with you, and you said, "I need to do a super cream." 
I want mm. something, all of our creams are amazing, but I want something for, and then you very politely said, for my age, meaning your age, and I was like, well, I could use the, I could use a super cream. <laughs> and you said, and then we, we got Biodynamic. The day it launched, there was only me on counter in Fennec, and I didn't sit down all day. We had had one article in, I think, The Telegraph or something, mm. and then it, and it was yes, all word of mouth. And all the regular customers, we had given them more baby sizes to try. Mm. It was myself and Lisa, I like it was Lisa, mm. God bless her. And all the customers were coming in, and I would run upstairs and try and get lunch, and they'd call and go, Caroline, you've got to go back downstairs. And I said, I forget the food, I'll just go back downstairs. <laughs> and I think the skincare definitely became word of mouth, but then if we got a skincare customer, we would convert them to future skin like exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. She was already in her skin the other way around. That's what happened. Yeah. Totally. Future skin brought the people mm -hmm. to skincare. Yeah. And skincare back. Yeah. Now, the skincare became really, really to a whole other level when we're the first people to work with stem cells. Yeah. Plant stem now, cells. Plant stem cells are incredibly effective. I know you don't always believe in it and I need to have a conversation with you. No, no, it's not, it's not that I believe in it. It's the, it's the claims other people make about them is my problem. All you have to know There are some using. very erroneous claims where yeah. I'm just like, come on. You know, they make it sound as if they can make disabled people walk. Right, like world peace. <laughs> no, seriously, you've seen things. Yeah. So you're just like, okay, if the claims are great, solid, then that's fine. Right. Because it's really effective. That's the thing. It's really effective. Now we develop a special lab that grows stem cells all day long. And we test, you know, a hundred mm. different ones every year. We come out with one or two that are really incredibly effective. They tested in vivo, they're really tested, and you see the difference. So now we have in you know, a product four or five stem cells, we have all of these different ingredients that are incredibly effective. But the other thing is, I think is important to mention, is that you do not, because you are still, it's still Chantecaille. Mm -hmm. It's not owned by any huge conglomerate. Nope. You have no intention of selling, it's a family business. Mm -hmm. So you make all the decisions. So you're not beholden to, well, we need to anniversary this big release, so we need to bring out something else. You bring out a product. Well, you think intelligently. You yeah, don't, you but know. what I mean is you're, you're not bringing out a product every quarter. She tells me, Mom, we need to sell. <laughs> we bring them out when it makes sense and when yeah. there's learnings and then you've been studying it for months. We don't bring not, anything that's not perfect. You know, if yeah. it's not right, you don't push it out to the market. Really. For sure, that's true. And so I think every product, when it lands, it hits its, on its feet. Yeah, and it's really a successful. real reason to the, I always tell people don't don't ever do something that's going to confuse the girls. Mm -hmm. So if it's the same, a little bit different, that's not necessary. It needs to be different. It needs to be for the woman exactly what she needs. And it's so easy because if you are on counter, my favorite place still, you can say, okay, do you like oil? No, okay, so your water fly fluid. Are you so and so? And then you can yeah. go down that way. Now, just before we go off and we could talk for hours, I want to really focus on when you made the switch from we're a skincare company, we're a makeup company, we're a cosmetics brand we could do something really good with this mm. and the butterfly palette. Because I was on board when you had the butterfly palette. Oh, now, the since one. then, we have gone, you've gone completely... Uhura. I know that it's, I think it's your new passion, personally. I think it's actually it your, I think it's, I think it's your fourth child. It is, <laughs> it's, I think it is the thing that motivates me. Yeah. So talk it to me about the animals and the conservation. Because again, I don't know if people, see it again, people are doing it now, but you've been doing it for at least... Yeah. Well, if it's at least, it's been 12 years yeah. of animals and 21 collections individually. And now it's going to be part of our everyday lineup. So it's yeah. permanent. Because we hate to leave anybody, you know. That, that's like me as a stroke of genius. When, when I saw you taking it in, sorry to interrupt, but when I saw you taking it into your everyday collection, I was like, that's what was missing. Yeah. Yeah. Genius. Well, it broke our heart when someone would walk by and go, do you guys do charity? And we're like, what do you mean? Of course. And it just happened to be the week that the one palette had sold out, the next one hadn't launched yet, you know, it wasn't in the calendar. So you did butterflies. Yeah. So we need butterflies. The first thing with the butterflies, because I noticed, you know, I'm a gardener. My hands, you can see. I'm a gardener, and then. But you really I are a gardener. Yeah. I've seen you. Oh yeah. Where's Sylvia? She's in the garden. I love her. Head oh, down, right. button air. You know, <laughs> and I like that button air. Yeah. Nice. So happy. So, the question was the butterfly would not come here as much. There was not as many. We have, we have this beautiful butterfly in the United States that come from Mexico, and uh, they were not. There just weren't there. So I tried to figure out why. So I studied like I like to study, you know. So I figured out the whole thing, and then I thought, okay, I found the two women who had created in Mexico a haven for butterfly, which is basically fighting the destruction act of people, it's called the Pionis Act, they were giving the land to uh, Mexican people that they were allowed to have land to cultivate. So they were taking down all those trees. You may yeah. have seen the photos, you see this beautiful tree with a million butterflies on it, and yeah. that's how they spend the winter. 
and they were taking them down. So we gave them money. We raised, I remember we were so proud, we raised $25,000. Wow. We were over the moon excited, and they were over the moon excited too because they never get such a grant from anybody. So it was so nice. So that was the first thing. That told us we could do something. Yeah. And you know, we did it like what we do with passion. The thing were incredible, new technology of pressing. There were three colors in the same thing going yeah. all the way. It was crazy. So pretty. Right. So the next one was coral. the coral. And we like Coral's the only one I didn't get. <laughs> oh, I still see it. I still you go, oh! Connie for that. She's here next week. She's all of them. She's so proud. I know. <laughs> oh, damn you, Connie. <laughs> Literally. And I remember going and seeing them and people were like, Caroline, don't you touch that coral. I've got two in the office. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but there wasn't even any to buy. They were like, vroom. They were yeah. beautiful. I yeah. worked on the with the oh. artistry of the Swarovski crystal. I'm going to drop a picture and I'm going to find the picture and drop it in so you can be as gutted for me as I am. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so the coral was great because Alex and I had died. And so we, we go see what's going on down there. Mm. And I was again, I was not not very long ago. This year I was diving with Philippe. We were in uh, the Philippines, and all the corals were white. I'd been bleached everywhere. Mm. And you're so depressing. You see turtles. You see everything should be normal, and it's dead, dead, mm. dead, dead. So we thought the coral was an important story. Now it is beautiful, something we love, but it's bleaching all around the world. So we found this guy who um, had. It's a, it's a scientist, very good looking guy actually. Help. And help, tell that help, help. And we listened to his story maybe because of that. <laughs> and he was, he was re-implanting um, live coral into certain dead reefs and it was working. Wow. And so he was doing that all over the world, picking certain coral that were particularly resilient and bringing it back. And so we thought that's fantastic. So we did this to give him money to, to do that. So that was the second one. And you've done 21 now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, the ones I see now, you're just you're just basically in Africa all the time. <laughs> Elephants, <laughs> lions, my favourite. I'm like, oh my god, it's lions! Lions in Chantico, yeah. they for me. Oh, we cats, love the lions. Cats, cats. So beautiful. Well, they're being murdered everywhere. You know, they're being poisoned. They're being killed. And so, there were these fantastic girls who have created this company called the Lion Guardians, and they've taken these boys who are normally um, the hunters. They're supposed to kill a lion. This is in to Kenya. Mm -hmm. They're Maasai, and they. I've understood that those boys had no future because today there is not enough future for boys. They live in a boma, which is a little village <coughs> made of uh, shrubs, and um, there's not nowhere to go. Yeah. They're not taught how to read or write. They're not taught how to even speak Swahili, which is a common language in Kenya. They have no future. So they took them and they're teaching them to read, write, speak Swahili, offer the GPS, and they teach them because they're not a bush like nobody else. Yeah. They teach them to watch over the lions. Amazing. And to help the little kid who takes the goats and the cow, don't go there, the lions are there. The, the cow is lost, I'll find the cow. Oh. All of this. So it's been an incredible thing. It's over three countries now, actually five now. And they are returning to a population of lions. Like three times the amount of lions are growing now. And I think what's cool is in the beginning I remember doing, I used to travel like you all the time and train and you have to sell it and everyone's like, you're not doing children, you're not doing women, you know, you're not doing humans, what's <laughs> yeah. wrong with you guys? And I think they saw us as being sort of animals and, and people, but the truth is when you help the animals, you help, you help the, the people. people. Cool. The, lion the bees. Guardian, you know, the bees, the, I mean, the truth is, Especially back with the original butterfly, that was the first of conflict around where the people should live and where the exactly. butterfly endemically lives. This is what's happening now with the with the thing with, with the elephant. The elephant. It's everything. the migratory path that's original, and trying to find a way to still allow the people to prosper and grow, but also maintain and respect the path of the animal. Because if the animal's not doing well, we're not doing well. No, it's cool. one planet, and so I think more and more people are coming to that realization. But it's it was never a we're too good, or it was just. The animals don't have a voice, no one's helping them. There's lots of voices for people. And you are all proper animal junkies. Yes, totally. For sure. Because you're all a complete yeah. love. It's wild places and endangered species. Love. Because <laughs> you need help. You know? And we don't have enough wild places. And we human die without wild places. Mm. You lose your humanness. Mm. This is why when you go to Africa, the first time you go, it hits you, boom. Yeah. You don't know you're going to fall in love, and you fall in love head over heels. Yeah. Because suddenly you know exactly 
who you are. Yeah. There is something that's so intrinsic to who you are there. And it's so powerful. And that's so what has the same story, don't they? It pulls you sort of like puts you back in your boots. You're like, this yeah. makes sense. And you hit the rhythm of waking early and going to bed and you're with the animals and I mean cities are amazing. We love London, you know, we're yeah. in this gorgeous city, they're necessary, but to not kind of put your feet in the sand or in oh. the dirt and actually and the, observe the, the beauty noise of the nature. wild, the sound of the wild yeah. is amazing. And then you realize the calm. I'm never afraid in the bush. I would never no. be afraid of being eaten by a lion. Uh, I would. Yeah, just putting that out there. <laughs> I would. Just, just, just get, a tad. Get, get your own tent if you travel with her. How about yeah. that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. So, okay, so 20th anniversary. Yes. Let's do a quick Q&A, just for a bit of fun. Sure. Okay. Most surprising thing you've learned you. on your journey? You. Why? You. <laughs> you. <laughs> Most surprising you. thing you've learned in the industry? Um, that you can I make it. You, that you can make it? Hard work? Yeah. It's, you know, as it tells, it's the Sean McKay did in the old fashioned way. Mm. Blood, sweat, and tears. Mm. Yeah. But that gives you longevity, surely. Yeah. Also, an ethical backbone. Yes. I never saw you guys, I mean, I haven't been involved in your business for 15 odd years, but I've never saw you make a decision that was led by money. No. Quite the opposite. No. no. My, quite the opposite. Some people are chagrined, but yeah. No. <laughs> But I think it comes it comes full throttle. I think people are getting it now, mm -hmm. and it's it's like a tidal wave of popularity and respect yeah. and support because we were the little authentic engine that could, and, and now you're the big authentic engine that still is. It's getting bigger. It's yeah. great, you know. I mean, I remember the first time I went to Bergdorf. I was sort of rotating through counters, and one woman walked up to, I'll have a rose water and this, and I was like, I don't need to sell you. You already know what you want. You know, she was <laughs> replenishing, and I didn't understand. I'm like, I know we, we we have dinner, so someone's paying the bills. You know, I know it's doing well, but I had no idea people just knew it off the name and I didn't have to sell it, you know. And a regular Sean Sky customer will not be swayed. Yeah, you know, I'm very loyal. It, it, many people when I they're like, finally I found you. It's like where have you been? You know, yeah, it answers their needs over and so well. Over again. So stay. Alex, favorite product? Lip potion. <laughs> that was very quick. Oh, that's nice interesting. It's been out that. of stock for five months, and I'm thinking of buying one here <laughs> at Liberty or Harrods because we don't have any oh in the States. Oh my god. No, it's like. It's coming back. It's, coming it's back. like wearing warm socks to bed or something when you're cold. I mean, it's the nicest. It's so lovely and soft, and it, nothing keeps my lips unchapped. Every other thing is nice, but it, it ultimately dries. This is like the perfect apricot and rose oil and very conditioning and, and healing. And it's a touch of gloss if you need it. I mean, Favorite makeup item? Um, I'm, I'm a future skin everyday junkie. I think it's the most coverageable and manageable. favorite fragrance. Pital. Oh, Pital is so good. heady and gardenia, and it works really well, and it's so romantic oh. and fresh. Okay, boss lady, you favorite can, fragrance. You can ask me the same question because I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> Every product I make is like one of my child. Hmm. But you, you can't ask me which the best. No, I can't. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. Okay. Like kids. okay. Oh, I do. It depends who's annoyed me that day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hardly ever Ava. I'll tell you that. Okay. Favorite fragrance today? Okay. The one I made for me originally is Vetiver. The second that I is, made Now, for can me I just say, your fragrances are so underrated. Not by people who know fragrance. Yeah. But in terms of the industry. If you want a fragrance that is well constructed, like phenomenal dry down, just Beautiful unbelievable. But that, that vetiver is astounding. I have to ask, thank you Central London. <laughs> <laughs> then I made a new one, I made the wild. I know, okay, the wild, the wild for me was wild. like crap. Yeah. <laughs> I smelt that once and said, I think she actually made this just for me. <laughs> but like, if I don't ask this, I will be shot by old school, Dolby Rose. Yeah, so we're, we're trying. trying. Oh my god, Dobby Rose, come on, please. Okay. Even it's, Philippe loves it. It's like I, know, I know, I know, I know. So Dobby Rose, if you're not unaware, was one of the original four or three? No, four. It was, no, it came yeah. after. It came fifth. It was fifth. It was fifth, and it's a fantastic fragrance. But at the time, we couldn't get one ingredient. Yeah. So we said instead of bastardizing, let's just stop it. I yeah. think that's a great example too. Totally. Instead of making you could have just made another version. one. Yeah. yeah. Nope, just, and it broke so many hearts, but you don't want, it would break more if it Beckham, was bad. Beckham bought everything you could find. Oh, damn him, David. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite makeup? I'm a future skin girl too. And my mascara. Skincare? Best mascara. Skincare, I cannot live without my newest, which is the uh, gold mask. Yeah. Okay, it's a good one to sleep So, in. you know, it's 
logical usually it's my last child my favorite one you know so the, the <laughs> yeah like all her passwords of Philippe is a golden boy like, <laughs> it's all about the youngest baby good tonight yeah numero uno my son all those <laughs> it's not true at all <laughs> and then the future what does the future hold sleep I hope <laughs> well you know that's not gonna happen so the future for you Alex what does the future hold for Chantecaille in your eyes I think it's continuing what we're doing with growing different categories and expanding. Olivia started a beautiful baby line that's all yes. eco-certain organic. Completely organic. Um, I, like, you know, I would love to do like shampoo and go into other areas and I, I think it's staying steady and consistent and, and telling more people the message of there's good for you skincare, there's clean makeup that's breathable and can be done with a very high quality and very sophisticated too. Um, continuing to communicate the passion of travel and all the animals that need help and, and using media and technology to tell those stories in a really almost like using VR and ways to yeah, maybe try. make our own stores that have that experience so you're in it as well I mean just to bring the magic of what we've been able to see in, tra in traveling and experience back to people without bringing an actual lion to London for me because yeah, that yeah. would be the dream <laughs> soon well, no, thank we you. Take you to Africa. That'd yeah, that's better. the real thing. I think the old boys want to go. Get you there. They would want to go, totally. Yeah. Um, thank you for taking thank time you. to talk to me. And congratulations on 20 years of just being you and being fab. And here's to many, many more. Um, I will link everything below, obviously. Mm -hmm. Everything. Um, enjoy your... You're having a nice big anniversary dinner this evening. We are. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much. No, we mm. oh, so proud. Bye, everyone. Sorry. Have a <laughs> <fun>. Bye. <laughs>